So uh, this is about the Google toolbar and the midget porn. So if you're into either one of those two things, you should stick around. If you're not, well, actually, there's um, we're, we're talking about XML and Bash and uh, sending some code to Google as well. So all right, so midget porn, Google toolbar, XML, Bash, Python. If any of those things interest you, then this is the right place. Okay, so um, the Google, right? What would we ever do without these guys? What did we do before we had Google? The Google toolbar specifically, what problem does this thing solve for us? So uh, if you're a, a geek, if you've got uh, a computer in front of you, you probably have a million bookmarks, right? And you have a million at home, you have a million at work. And they're the geek tool, so they're everywhere on the go. So Google toolbar sure seems like the solution, right? Or as we're gonna talk about here, is it really just a tease? You probably think, or probably like most people, that uh, of course it's good, right? It's free, you can uh, download with Adobe. Uh, there's no problem, it just uh, installed, showed my browser, I can start using it, no big deal, right? So, of course it's good. Install is easy, it stores all your bookmarks, you can access them wherever you want, whenever you want, no more lost bookmarks, right? Some days they just store better than others. So time passes if you're like an ordinary person and you discover things out on the internet or elsewhere and you bookmark your discoveries and of course now you're happy, right? And if you're like this guy, you may uh, accidentally or on purpose <laughs> put on your special shirt and uh, have a special night all to yourself. <laughs> so uh, um, the specific function of my talk here is to make you aware of some things you may not be aware of if that is your lifestyle <laughs> of choice uh, and what the, um, the corporate side of this uh, may, may look like to you. So the next day at work after your special night, you get in and you log into Google of course and use your uh, toolbar with all your handy bookmarked links. Now if you're like uh, most uh, organizations, you probably have a computer security department. And if you're like most organizations, that department probably watches uh, what you do, or at least what they think you're doing, or your computer's doing, and they associate that with you. Now, they may watch you very closely. <laughs> they may have web proxies in place, they may have web filtering, they may have web uh, reporting in place. Um, depending on uh, how much uh, diligence they apply to their web reporting, uh, they may actually let your manager take a look at your usage and how uh, technically proficient do you really think your manager is in looking at usage and figuring out whether it was you or whether it was your computer or whether it was uh, something else. So uh, I'm going to tempt fate again and uh, change some screens around and see if we can do, uh, see what happens when we actually uh, access the, um, <laughs> the Google toolbar. Okay, so, hey, this is working finally, okay. So here we have a Windows box, uh, just a VM on my station, and then we've got our little, uh, little my uh, VM, or my, my box here that's gonna be our attacker. So let's, uh, I'll show you what I'm gonna run. So I'm just gonna run a quick little t shark command to grab uh, traffic um, on this, uh, the interface that this, ha this guy happens to be listening to. And then we're going to go out and access the uh, the Google toolbar. Hopefully you can see some of this stuff. If you can't, and you're really interested, come see me after this and I'll show you it <laughs> in person. <laughs> so we're going to log in to Google in the Google toolbar. We're going to choose uh, stay signed in. If you watch down here in the bottom, hopefully you can see this. If you're in the back, you're probably going to have some trouble. So move up front because there's lots of spaces. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go out and access the bookmarks, right? So here's uh, three bookmarks that I've got for DEF CON, Freaky Midgets, because that's what I like. <laughs> Not really. I just, the research for this, you'd, uh, you wouldn't want to be with me when I had to do it. Anyways, uh, and, uh, and Yahoo, right? And you don't see any traffic down at the bottom so far. And we also don't have any, in this case, we're looking for favorite icon hits. So we don't have any right now. And as a user, we're going to go, well, what's wrong with that? Maybe, uh, oops. <laughs> Let's, let's do it again here. Do a refresh is what I meant to hit. Refresh, we still don't see anything down the bottom. When you do a third refresh, then you start to see uh, the favorite icon hits uh, down in the browser below. So this is, uh, you haven't, haven't actually hit anything from uh, for any website yet and the Google toolbar is going out on your behalf and retrieving the favorite icons for all the sites in your list, no matter where you have them in your list. All right, 
So again, what we saw, I put this in there just in case my demo didn't work. So for every UR, uh, every bookmark you've got, uh, the Google toolbar attempts to hit to the favorite icon.gif or favorite icon.url file. Why does it do this? Uh, there's a, uh, an XML structure that we'll look at in just a little bit associated with the, uh, the bookmarks. See, I told you there was more than midget porn, there's XML. Uh, and if you look into the XML structure on here, you can see uh, there's an attribute for the, uh, the favorite icon itself. Uh, where is it down here? In this case, it's Freaky Midget's uh, favicon.ico file. So the book, the toolbar knows that you got this one, at one point in time, and it's going to go out there and try to retrieve it for you again. And at this point in the talk, you're probably saying, "Well, that's fascinating. Of course, that's what it does. Why is that uh, of any interest at all?" So back to the corporate security department that we've got. Remember, they're watching you. So uh, in the case where you have bookmarks at your home that you may not want anyone to know about at your corporate uh, environment, um, the Google toolbar is, is still letting everyone know, just even via the favorite icons, and we'll look at some other ways that will let people know, uh, all the sites that you've got bookmarked in there. And I've seen this in investigations, which is what led me uh, to this talk, where you investigate someone and you go, why is this guy looking at porn? <laughs> it happens every, you know, there's a timed uh, refresh associated with this. It happens every X number of hours, I forget the exact interval. Uh, all of a sudden, there's all these favorite icon hits to a variety of porn sites in there, and you go, this, then, uh, uh, why? <laughs> so when they say why, what's the next thing they're going to do? They're going to go investigate you. And uh, let's take a look at what they'll see. So if they uh, have a blue code proxy in place, they may run this little one-liner. Uh, uh, I just put this in there in case you didn't already know about this. And you have a blue code proxy, you can use this to get at traffic. And for in uh, index.dat files, uh, we won't actually see anything because it's not the uh, Internet Explorer that, uh, that generated it. It's the Google, Google toolbar itself, as you can see in the uh, user agent down here below. So are there workarounds for this situation? Well, there are some Firefox plugins that seem like they'd be helpful. Uh, there's a uh, places pack from Andy Halford, to sync places, check places, sort places. And... Uh, they allow you to send bookmarks different places, uh, uh, package them up, ship them out over HTTP, HTTPS, all that in a variety of formats. And they look like they'd be useful because they uh, seem to solve this favorite icon issue and storing it actually in binary in part of the JSON file. But the gotcha here is that uh, anytime you import bookmarks, especially I tested this in Firefox, uh, it still does exactly the same thing. It still tries to retrieve all the favorite icon uh, hits just like the Google toolbar. So what do you do? Duh, stop looking at porn. <laughs> or go back to the good old days when you can carry it around in your floppy disks. <laughs> or if, if uh, you're just determined to have it, you could straighten up the JSON, you can get it all neat and remove the bookmarks that you may not want uh, someone else to see, and then write some script you know, to carry that back and forth. So enough about that. What else can we do with all this information? Uh, well, here's a normal user agent from a, from a browser, right? As you see, it's uh, Mozilla 4, IE6, and even says Google Toolbar 6.4. But let's look at a user agent from the Google Toolbar itself. Google Toolbar 6.4.1321.1731. It also tells you the exact version of Microsoft Internet Explorer. So obviously, once you know a little bit more information, you can start to figure out what vulnerabilities that guy's got on him. And what else can we do with this? Um, if you can actually get at the XML, I thought to myself, you could uh, do some uh, tag cloud bookmarking if you're just sitting on your uh, coffee shop Wi-Fi and look at that. So I took uh, some time with Python and created a new tool uh, to see what I could get out of that. Out of that. So. so here I got a bunch of uh, PCAP files and, uh, and I'm gonna run this tool against those. Actually, let me do it over here. Since for some reason I have multiple million screens. And so there's this uh, G2 bar snoop that I wrote that's in the, the DEF CON CD and I'll post this as an updated version of it actually. I'll post it on the uh, on my website, uh, pwnlabs.com, after the talk. So you just give the name of a file. In this case, we'll choose a, a prepared, a, a, just one I captured as I happen to be accessing the, the bookmarks. And uh, you can tell it what you want to dig out of it. We'll go right for the money here and pull out the XML structure of the bookmarks that happen to be transferred back and forth on that. You can give it other things you want also. There's an email address associated with it. So in this case, you can see I had a DEF CON 18 at pwnlabs.com. That's, uh, that's in there. Uh, you can just pull out favorite icons. 
oops, it's actually icons. <laughs> you think I would know that? Uh, and uh, one more thing you can do with this. Um, let's let's say uh, in this case we have one without any bookmarks. So none in there. It turns out if you can gather the uh, the cookies associated with uh, with this traffic on there, you can just send those cookies back to Google and they'll cough up the bookmarks associated with it. So I wrote a, uh, a module for this I called the cookie missile. And if you, uh, in this case, like I showed you, there aren't really any bookmarks in this file, but I do have the cookie. And hopefully this works. Yes, so we get the XML uh, back from Google. So here's a PCAP file, I had no bookmarks in it, all I had was cookies and user agent uh, headers, send that back to Google and then they cough up the, the user's bookmarks associated with that. So you can find out what someone's got uh, in their bookmarks. That was the demo. <laughs> uh, what else happens to be in here? See if I got uh, some more time, I think I do. Um, there's deleted bookmarks. So let's look at an allocated bookmark. Uh, in this case, this is the URL structure for it. If you look at a deleted bookmark structure, it has what I call this uh, special K label, because I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> but the uh, labels are what they, uh, they give to things for like, uh, if, you put, if, like if you made a not safe for work folder, they would call that a label. In this case, this, uh, this bookmark has a, a special K label <laughs> assigned to it. And then they also have uh, favorite icon timestamps. This is just a Unix, uh, you know, epic time timestamp. Throw this into awk or whatever, and again, or uh, whatever, and pull out you know just the the time when that was actually allocated. So if you're a forensic guy and you want to know when someone last accessed something, you can pull out their XML. You can just find a cookie, send it up to Google. They'll send you back all the deleted bookmarks and the last time the guy accessed it. So um, depending on how you use the Google toolbar. <laughs> And, uh, and your uh, work life home balance habits and your corporate environment, this may be shocking to you. This may be sad. You may have to give up some sites that, or your use of the Google toolbar. Or uh, you may choose to not use the Google toolbar anymore. Or you may choose to give up porn. I don't know. <laughs> the point of it is to make you aware of, uh, of uh, some issues with the Google toolbar, especially the privacy issues associated with it. If you weren't aware before, because I can tell you from experience that some people who use it aren't aware and they end up getting themselves uh, in some embarrassing uh, situations over an investigation. So uh, I'll be in the Q&A section if you have anything later. Just get a beer and talk about it if you want. Uh, no midgets were harmed in this presentation and enjoy the rest of your time at DEF CON. Thanks.